in this video, I'm going to show you how I prepare this popular store-bought mole paste. It's the Mexican brand Doña Maria and is available in many grocery stores. You might want to look for it in the Hispanic product section or any Mexican market. If you can see here on the jar, it says add your seasoning. So today we are going to be able to create a flavor base to enhance the taste of this mole paste. So stick around and I'll show you how. But before we get started, let me show you some of the delicious Mexican meals you can make with this mole rojo. Here we have mole rojo with chicken and a side of Mexican rice. But also you can have enmoladas the next day, which are chicken mole enchiladas, and have mole tortas in the next day lunch for work. Or perhaps you want to have fried eggs topped with mole sauce for breakfast. Or why not make tamales for sale or for potluck at work in your Christmas parties. And here we have the traditional ingredients that we are going to need to make the most popular sauce in Mexico, el mole rojo. First, we are going to need a jar of Doña Maria mole paste like this one. For this recipe, I'm gonna use five to seven bone-in chicken pieces but you can use shredded chicken instead or not use any chicken at all. Also for this recipe, I'm gonna use eight cups of chicken broth, but you can use vegetable broth or water instead. We are going to need half tablet of the Mexican chocolate, which is about 45 grams. Here I have the abuelita bren, which means granny in English. But you can use the other popular brand as well. It's called Ibarra. Also, we are going to need a half of the bolillo roll cut into two pieces, top and bottom. Telera roll, baguette, or dinner roll would work here as well. We are going to need a slightly dried corn tortilla so it won't absorb too much oil. A quarter cup of dried peanuts, two medium tomatoes, half white onion, two large garlic cloves, about a cup of cooking oil, a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. If you're using whole spices, make sure to blend them very well. Now let's talk about the dried chiles. We are going to need one large or two small ancho chiles. Also, we are going to need three large or five small guajillo peppers. This is optional, but if you're looking to add some heat to your mole, you can add five to 10 arbol peppers. Okay, if you're using chicken for this recipe and want to use its broth to make your mole sauce, the first thing you wanna do is to cook the chicken and then reserve it for a later step. And here, I'm showing you which ingredients I normally use to cook my chicken pieces. But if you are interested in the step-by-step -step video, check out my videos. You will find two easy recipes. I hope you find them helpful. Now, the next step is to open the mole paste jar. It could be a little bit tricky, and you gotta be careful when you open this container because the oil from the paste is sitting right on top of the glass and if it spills, it could stain anything it touches. So to remove the top, you might want to use a bottle opener similar to this one. As you can see here, the lid has three lifting points. So we are going to start by lifting the lid on any of these points a little bit at a time, going all around the jar. Make sure to grab the glass firmly and not to spill the oil. So now, because the paste is kind of compacted, we are going to use a butter knife to break it up and loosen it up a little to help you to get the paste out from the jar when you need it. And we reserve it for a later step. Now let's do some preparation before we toasting our ingredients. Here I rinsed the dried chiles and the tomatoes. I patted them dry with a paper towel 
and then I removed the stems and the seeds out from the dry chiles. You can also chop them in small pieces if you think it will be easier for you to toast them. I also chopped the tomatoes, onion, and garlic just a little to make it easier for the blender. Now that we have all the ingredients ready, the next step is toasting them in a little bit of oil. But first, we are going to need two or three cups of warm broth or water for the soaking process. So add into a pot two or three cups of broth. If your broth is cold, set it on low heat, just to warm it up a little. Once it gets warm, you can turn it off or just keep it on a very low heat. Next, in a separate pan, heat up a little bit of cooking oil, just enough to coat the frying pan. And here you might want to use your less fancy frying pan. Now simply toast the ingredients until lightly toasted and make sure to control the heat so that we don't burn any of them. And here we are toasting the peanuts. But my friends, the order of the ingredients doesn't affect the taste of the mole sauce, but for me it's better to leave the tomatoes and dry chiles for last. Now, once they turn golden brown, the next thing we are going to do is transfer them into the pot with the warm broth. Try to drain the oil as much as possible when you remove them from the frying pan. Then we fry in the tortilla until lightly toasted and we also add it to the warm broth. And then we toast the half of the bolillo roll both sides until lightly toasted and we transfer it into the warm broth as well. Now we saute the onion and the garlic until soft and slightly brown and also transfer them into the warm broth. As you can see here, at this point, I needed to add more oil, so if your frying pan needs more oil, keep adding until we finish toasting all of the ingredients. Next, we roast the tomatoes until softened and browned a little and we add them into the warm broth as well. And lastly, we are going to toast the dry chiles. And here, my friends, it's very important to control the heat when we are toasting the dry chiles because we want to toast them without burning them. Once they are slightly toasted, we also soak them in the broth. They will rehydrate, release their own flavors to enhance the taste of the mole paste and then remove the frying pan from the heat. And here we have the toasted ingredients, soaking in two cups of warm broth. You can always add more broth to make sure they get nice and soaked. Now we need to add into the pot with the rest of the ingredients, the Mexican chocolate. Make sure all of them are submerged in the broth. Cover and let it rest for about 10 minutes. After they cool down, we add all of them into our blender. Also here we want to add the seasonings, including ground cinnamon, clove, and pepper. And then we add one or two cups of chicken broth. And now we blend long enough until we have a really smooth consistency. As you can see here, all of the ingredients fitted in my blender cup nicely, but you can blend them in two separate parts if needed. After we get a smooth sauce, set the blender aside for a moment. And now in a large pot, heat up about two tablespoons of oil or pork lard. Now the next step is to strain our sauce. Simply pour the sauce into the pot through a fine mesh strainer to remove any small pieces such as seeds and skin and make sure to squeeze out all of the liquid and keep it on low heat. And my friends, this sauce is looking good already. Now, at this point, we want to add the mole paste, but not before we blend it along with two cups of broth or water. You might want to use a spoon to scoop out the mole paste from the jar. We do want to blend until smooth consistency, but this time it shouldn't take too long. And then we pour it into the pot together with the flavor-based sauce to create one unique mole flavor. And this time, you don't have to strain the sauce. And here I'm adding another half cup of broth just to get the most of the sauce out of the blender. But also here, you want to add the rest of the liquid. For this video, I used about seven cups of liquid. 
but you'll be good with eight cups if you are looking for a thinner consistency. But if the sauce is still a little bit too thick, you can add more broth a little bit at a time until you reach the thickness that you're looking for. And make sure to add more salt to your taste. And my friends, it's very important that you always cook your mole on a low heat and stir constantly so that your mole doesn't stick to the bottom of the pot. And now simply bring to a simmer and allow the flavors release and come together. If you are making a bigger batch of mole, you always want to add your liquid gradually until you get the consistency that you're looking for. So my friends, here it took about 30 minutes to get to the perfect mole sauce thickness. But the time could be different for everyone. So you want to pay attention to the consistency, color, flavor, and smell of your mole sauce. So your sauce should be on the thick side. It shouldn't be runny, but it shouldn't be too thick. The sauce should look darker and kinda oily and your whole house should smell like happiness. And now my friends, for those of you who decided not to use any chicken at all, or want to pour the sauce directly over the chicken on your plate, simply remove your mole sauce from the heat and enjoy. But if you add in chicken pieces, like me in this recipe, this is a good time to do so. Just let them simmer together in a very low heat for a few minutes, remove it from the heat, and serve it to your family. Another great option is to mix shredded chicken with your mole and have it ready for your next recipe. Simply combine shredded chicken with your mole sauce for a couple minutes and then remove it from the heat. And there you have it! If you want to make the most iconic sauce in Mexico with a unique mole flavor, but you don't have the time or all of the dry chiles and ingredients that requires to make mole from scratch, so this recipe could be a great option for you. I hope you like my video and find it helpful. You can always make any adjustments to make it perfect for you and your family by adding your personal touch patience and love. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.